So we're on Shrimpling Park Farm and I'm with John Pawsey, who is the farmer. It's lovely to be with you. Thank you for welcoming us. Well, thank this. you so much for coming. Yeah, we're really glad to be here. Very blessed with the weather as well. <laughs> so, um, John, I know farming's been in your family for quite some time, hasn't it? It has. And actually, we're standing on my maternal side of the family's farm. Uh, and, and their name actually was Alston. And they came down from Ayrshire in the 1880s. And they were sort of pioneering farmers who, who found it difficult to make money out of farming in Scotland and came down to the, the bread basket, basket of, of uh, England, which is in the east, which is where we are now. And it was really, it was interesting you used that word pioneer, because as we've been walking, you've been talking to me about farming as being a pioneering thing. Can you say a bit well, more about that? I, I, I think it is. I mean, I think that um, certainly if you think about sort of producing food around the world, I mean, generally, it's, it involves people sort of going out and actually finding new lands and adapting and changing the ways that they perform their duties agronomically to sit, suit different situations. And I think that, you know, my family certainly coming down from Scotland, from the sort of hill of Ayrshire down to the flatlands of East Anglia would have had to have learnt pretty quickly how to, to do things. And I think that it's sort of, I think also um, as, as somebody involved in any kind of any kind of work, uh, when you're making those changes, that is a really sort of a healthy thing to do because change is great. It keeps us all refreshed. It does. And you, you yourself, I know we're going to talk about a little bit more about this later. You've, you've done many changes, haven't you? You're, you're quite a pioneer in your own right. Well, we have, yes. I mean, we, we we converted our, our farm to organic production a few years ago and um, you know that is, is something that we did for, you know, for various sort of reasons um, but um, it's something that I've really enjoyed, it's something that I've really, um, uh, as far as my own personal development about learning how to do something different has been fantastic. So it's a sort of journey and, um, and we're going to hear more about that later, really looking forward to that later in the service. This journey thing for farming, there's also a journey of faith, isn't there, that goes alongside that? You have to have some kind of faith um, to, to, to keep yourself going, because some years when you get a terrible harvest and you do everything right, to then just sort of collapse and think, you know, I just can't do this anymore, is not an option. You have to get up the next day and keep on going. So John, here we are in one of your fields, and what have you got growing here? Well, in, in, in here is a bit of an odd one actually, because we've actually got two crops growing at the same time. We've got uh, milling wheat for making bread, and also beans that can be used for human consumption, but generally they go to feed organic animals. Wow, that's like, why have you got them together? Because we farm organically, and um, we find it challenging to grow just crops on their own, because if one crop gets a disease, okay. um, it can decimate the yield. So if you grow it with something else, one crop will dominate. And it's about trying to sort of level up yield in a field. And it's not really well practiced in the country, this country at the moment. Um, but, but we're trying it to get over these one or two problems that we have. And, and if you think about climate change and how weather yeah. is, 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 is changing, uh, we've got to build more resilience into our systems. That's great. And so are some crops particularly uh, complementary to each other? You... Yes, yes. And actually these two are very complementary because what happens is, as, as uh, any gardeners out there will know, that if you plant a bean, a pulse, it fixes nitrogen in the soil. It's a very important plant within a rotation. And what tends to happen is that as the beans senesce, they die, they, they've, had, they've flowered and they put their pods out, they release nitrogen from their roots. And at that point, the wheat then takes it up, it takes it into the grain and increases the protein content, which makes it um, much better for making bread. Wow, that is, that's really, really interesting. So is there anything particularly that you're doing to this crop at the moment, at this time of year? At the moment, we are, we're hoeing it. We're taking a, an inter-row hoe in between the crops to take out the weeds. So we dealt with the disease element, if yeah. there is any, with growing two crops together, and we just take a hoe in between them to, to take out the weeds. Um, so the crop can enjoy all the nutrients in the soil rather than competing with weeds. Fantastic. So this organic farm is a real passion of yours, isn't it? It is. I mean, you know, the, uh, everyone has a different way of farming. And that's the great thing about um, farming in this country is that everybody is, is coming from a different angle. There's so much to learn from each other. Um, we farm organically because uh, 20 years ago when we converted, I was worried about uh, the state of my soils. I was worried about soil health. 
I was also worried about um, the amount of chemicals we were putting on our on our um, our soils. And you know, I'm a farmer, not a scientist, so I can't tell you whether or not it was a good or a bad thing. Um, but actually, my my I'm going to use the word my I had this sort of gut feeling that it wasn't what I should be doing within my farming system. And I think actually it's that sort of trust in something within us. And I, I use the term a gut feeling, but it's this thing, there's some sort of outside force that informs you that something isn't right. So um, you can look at the science, uh, you can be very romantic about it as well, but actually if you sort of trust that inner yeah. sort of voice telling you to do something, and I just, I, I go with that quite a lot.